if you can practice using either of these five tools, your hands-on experience is going to improve. And you can use that as you go into the market looking for a job. One of the challenges that faces people that are starting their career in the network industry is gaining hands-on experience. But the greatest question is, how do you get hands-on experience? What tools are available on the market that will help you to gain that necessary experience? So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the five network tools that are going to help you to gain the necessary hands-on experience. Hey friends, my name is Tanay. If we're meeting for the first time, I've been working in the network industry for the last 20 odd years, started as a network instructor, and now I work as a network engineer at Perth Airport. My goal is to be a resource for those that are starting their career in the network industry through tutorials, course reviews, tips and guides, just like this one. So if you're new here, welcome. So back to our video. The first tool that we're going to be looking at is Cisco Packet Tracer. This is the most common tool for anyone who's starting their career in the network industry. It is free. All you need to do is to register a Cisco Academy account. And when you register, you'll be able to get access to the EXE file, which you can then install on either your PC or Mac. When you install this EXE file, it comes with everything that you need. So there's no need for additional iOS images. It requires low resources. It can run on about two gigabytes of RAM. So this can run on a PC, it can run on a laptop, and it can run on an old computer because of the low resource utilization. The reason why Packet Tracer is very common and why it is the first tool for anyone who's starting their career in the network industry is because of its visuals. So when you open Packet Tracer, it looks something like this. It's very visual. It gives you a bird's eye view of what your network topology is going to look like. So it's got a drag and drop feature. So you go and drag your router, you place it on the screen, and then it puts it. You pick a network cable that you're going to connect your router, whether it's serial or LAN cable, and then depending on what device you want to connect on the other end. So it is for people that are studying CCNA, 90% of your command line of your commands are going to be covered by packet tracer. Just be mindful though that it is limited in the fact that there are certain commands that are not going to work with packet tracer. So it is very important for you to understand that when it's not working, it's not because the syntax is incorrect, but it's because of the limitation of packet tracer. But if you're at an entry level, majority of your commands are going to be taken care of by packet tracer. Now, for many people, the natural progression path from packet tracer is going on to GNS3, which is the next tool that you're going to talk about. GNS3 is a multi-vendor tool. Packet Tracer is Cisco, which means that it only runs Cisco devices and nothing else. GNS3 on the other end is multi-vendor, so you can run Cisco, you can run Juniper, Fortinet, or Palo Alto. And this is very important. If you are going to need to build a lab that requires multi-vendors in order for you to test the configuration, and a typical configuration that comes to mind is a site-to-site -site VPN where you are running from Cisco to Palo Alto or Cisco to Fortinet. GNS3 is going to give you that ability because it runs multi-vendor infrastructure as compared to Packet Tracer. Just like Packet Tracer, it's also free. All you need to do is to create a GNS3 account and then you're going to get the installation file. However, GNS3 is resource intensive. So in terms of resource utilization, you're going to need at minimum eight gigabytes of RAM to get it to work. And in some instances, you actually need a, a virtual machine to be able to handle the processing of your virtual lab. And this requires you to install additional hypervisors such as VMware Workstation in order to get it to work. So there's quite a lot of external effort that is required. So it's not the easiest of deployments. GNS3 doesn't come with iOS images, which means that for you to get the images to run your router, your switches, you either have to talk to your local Cisco sales rep. If you got a Cisco account, if you don't have, then you're forced to go online to some dodgy sites just to get the images to make it work. However, when it works, 
it's perfect. It works great. Most people are using GNS3. Just go online, look for tutorials. You'll be able to find directions on how to get the iOS images to work in a GNS3 environment. There's no limit of devices in your lab. So you can build a lab with more than 100 devices. The only limitation is going to be the resources on your computer. The other good thing is that you can connect real networks to your virtual lab. So you can bridge your GNS3 network to your actual home network, which gives you access to other appliances such as Identity Services Engine, ICE, DSCP Active Directory. So you can get your virtual lab getting its IP addresses from a real DSCP server that is sitting on some part of the network. But this is not targeted towards entry level. This is more advanced level CCNP, CCIE. Entry level, packet tracer. When you graduate, you go to, Gen uh, you go to GNS3. The third tool is what is known as Cisco CML, which is Cisco Modeling Labs. This is a new name. It was called Cisco Viral before. So when I use Viral or CML, I'm basically talking about the same thing. It is one and the same product. Similar to GNS3, however, it is Cisco and only runs Cisco images. So you can't run Juniper or Fortinet or Palo Alto, only Cisco images. It comes with real iOS images, similar to GNS3. The only difference is that they are included in CML and it comes at a price point. So you pay $199 a year, but that $199 is going to give you iOS images, which are layer two images. Layer three, Nexus for the data center infrastructure. And you can also run ASA firewalls within Cisco CML. And I'm just gonna take a bit of a, a minute to explain the layer two images. Most switches run chips on the switch, which are known as ASICs. So these chips are what handle the processing of the layer two device. In virtual environments, you don't have the ASIC chips. So with GNS3, there was a limitation when you start making layer two configurations, there was so many commands that you could not do with GNS3. And that has been fixed with CML because you're running the actual layer two, IO, sorry, you're running the actual switch image. It provides you with much better functionality. Certain configurations that are not possible in GNS3 are possible in CML. I'm not saying that it's better because of that, but I'm just highlighting that it provides you additional configurations which become critical at an advanced level when you want to be able to test. With the 199 US dollars per month license, you get the Cisco router images, firewall images, Nexus images, but in addition, you also get Linux servers, load balancers, and one emulators. If you're looking for a complete package that's got almost everything that you're gonna need to run your lab, then Cisco CML is probably going to be your ideal networking tool. One emulators are very good if you want to simulate congestion so that you can be able to look at your QoS policies. Similar to GNS3, very high on resource utilization. Uh, you're looking at about eight gig of RAM up to about 16 gig. So this eliminates most of the, you know, low spec laptops and devices to be able to run your lab. Similar to GNS3, you can connect it to your real network. So I can connect my lab to my internet and pass my Linux machine inside my lab through a firewall to test firewall rules. So this is very good for you to be able to build a lab that simulates almost as close as possible as your real network. Remember, the objective is for us to get hands-on experience into configuration of our network appliances. There are two versions that come with CML. There's the personal version, which limits you to 20 devices. And then you got the enterprise one that limits you to about 40 devices. So depending on the size of the lab that you want to build, if you want to build a lab with more than 40 devices, then GNS3 is your best bet. But if you're looking for something less than 20 devices, I've never built a lab that needs 20 devices to be running at the same time. So if you're looking for less than 20, then you can go with Cisco CML. Now the fourth one is not a network simulator. This is buying the real equipment. Now, if you were to ask me what would be my recommendation for someone who's starting their career in networking, 
I would recommend you buy the real equipment. There is something about the real equipment that these simulators cannot replace. Now, if I were to ask you a question, if you had an option to drive a simulator Ferrari or a real Ferrari, which of the two would you prefer? I'm sure without taking a poll, most people would say they would want to drive the real car. And there's a reason why you want to drive the real car. There's something about getting into the car, getting the feel of the seats, you know, starting the engine, just hearing the noise that that car makes when you rev it up, that you can't get in a simulated device. This is the same thing. When you're starting, there's something about the physical device itself that you can never get from a network simulator. So I always encourage people, if you can, go and buy the real device because the real device is going to give you the necessary experience and confidence in working with Cisco e equipment way more than any of these simulators can give you. So why would you need to buy the real equipment? There's a feeling about just, you know, touching a real Cisco device, you know, looking at the ports at the front, looking at the SFPs, the console port, the micro USB, turning on the device and just seeing the light and the noise that the device makes when you're turning it on. It's something that you need to experience when you're starting your career. So I would actually encourage people, if you can, buy the real device. Now, if you go online, sites such as eBay, they've got CCNA kits that they sell. In these kits, sometimes they come with two routers, two switches, and they've put a package together. And inside that package, you've got the network cables that you're going to need. So you're going to have the LAN cable. They usually provide the serial one cable that allows you to connect two routers together to simulate a one link. And then you also have the console cable, which then allows you to then configure the particular device. And these kits usually go for about $500. The objective is less about the latest model of the switch, even though the higher the model of the device, sometimes the better the functionality. So there's certain things that you can't do on a lower spec device that you can do on a higher spec Cisco router or Cisco switch. But if you are starting just consoling to the device, just powering the device, just get it to work, configure it for the first time, upgrade it, wipe the entire config, configure the device, frustrating as it might be, there is a significant amount of learning that is involved. And that is why if I have my way, try and get yourself physical equipment at the beginning. Now, there are two things you need to know about physical equipment. Number one, it is going to be frustrating to set up. Now, most of us don't have ample space in the house where we can just leave our equipment running. So for most people, you're going to build your equipment when you're done. You're going to unpack it, put it in a cupboard somewhere. And the next time you want to use it, you have to then power it on, get it up and running. Sometimes you forget the password. And that takes too much time in just trying to set up before you can even start the configuration. So it's not the easiest to set up and it can be a bit frustrating. So people avoid physical devices for that reason. The second one is that you've got limitations in the size of the lab that you can build. If you're going to have two switches and two routers, it means that the best you can do is a two router and a two switch lab. The moment you need three routers, you're going to need another additional device, which you don't have. So be mindful that the size of your lab is going to be dependent on the number of physical devices that you have. And then the last one, and I'll speak for myself, 90% of the things that I want to do, especially when you go advanced, you're not so concerned about the physical device. If I want to configure BGP between two devices, I'm not so concerned whether I'm running it on a physical router or not. All I want is to test configuration and maybe policy routing or route filtering. I really don't care if it's virtual or physical. So in that case, the virtual tools are going to give you a much better experience because I'm interested in just bringing up BGP as quickly as possible. So the higher you go, the need for physical devices is going to diminish for that reason. But there are some people who need the physical devices and this is for CCIE. But if you're CCIE, then this video is not for you. 
this video is targeted towards people who are starting their career in networking. But if you're CCIE, there's sometimes you might, not, you might want to run Nexus commands such as VPCs that are not available in your simulated environments that a physical appliance is probably going to give it to you. But that's when you need it. And then the last two that you're going to look at is EVNG. EVNG and GNS3 are almost identical. They are all multi-vendor. They, they are free. They use almost similar resource utilization. Images are not included. You have to buy or find your way to get images. And they all connect to real networks. So your choice between EVNG and GNS3 is probably going to be a preference on which of the two vendors you know, works better for you. But GNS3 and, 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 and EVNG, one and the same thing. CCNA and below, entry level, packet tracer is the best tool. It's going to require the least amount of effort to get it up and running. And it's going to give you more than what you need in order for you to practice. When you have graduated from packet tracer and you want more advanced commands, GNS3 and EVNG are probably going to be your next step and depending on what it is that you want to accomplish then you can probably use cisco viral and the real equipment now i have these four in my in my lab packet tracer i rarely use it genus 3 and cisco viral are my go-to providers if i'm looking for asa firewall nexus commands load balances one emulators then cisco viral is probably my preferred path and in some situations i might go for genus 3 but usually i'm using this real equipment i have real equipment in the house but i rarely refer to it for that one simple reason that 90 percent of what i'm doing is less to do with the actual equipment but more on the commands in the configuration of what is on that equipment so let me know in the comments below which tool are you using and what has been your experience in either of these tools. I'm going to put links in the show notes below or in the comment section so that if you want to use one of these tools, you can go to the website, download, install it. And yeah, and let me know what's your experience. What did you like about the tool? What is it that you didn't like? And once again, I hope you found value in this video in looking at the five network tools that will help you gain hands-on experience. If you can practice using either of these five tools, your hands-on experience is going to improve. And you can use that as you go into the market looking for a job. Remember, employers are not only looking for real equipment. They are looking for configuration of the appliance. And these tools give you that ability for you to be able to configure. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.